video, I share with you 25 most forgotten wedding details. If you're a bride or groom-to-be, you probably might be overwhelmed with so much to do that you might forget some of these things, because I know I did. If you're interested in finding out what these details are so you don't make costly mistakes on your very big day, keep watching. <laughs> Hi beautiful, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Victoria. On this channel, I share with you tips and tricks to help you live your very best life. So I compiled this list from a place of working experience and also from my personal experience during my wedding. I can assure you that it's packed with loads of information that you will find helpful. If you find them helpful, don't forget to smash that like button so that you can always come back to this video over time and also it helps me. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join this wonderful family because I have loads of content coming up which I know you would find very, very helpful. And also turn on your post notifications so that every single time I release a new video, you'll be the first to know. Without further ado, let's get straight into this video. In no particular order, my number one tip would be have a plan B for bad weather. When we hear bad weather, the first thing that comes to our mind most of the time is rain. But I also want you to understand that there are other kinds of bad weathers when it comes to planning your wedding. Having your wedding when it's very like extremely hot is a bad weather. You want to make sure that you're putting that into consideration. And I understand that the climate is changing, but you want to go ahead of time and maybe check your weather forecast to make sure that you know what kind of weather at least you can plan towards what kind of weather you're going to be having that day you want to put that into consideration when you're working on your decor your colors and you might be asking yourself colors yes for instance if it's the hamatan weather and you're having an outdoor wedding you have no business with white before the event is over your decor is going to be messed up your outfit is going to be messed up and and all of that apart from your wedding gown anyway yeah if the weather is very hot you want to have a mobile fan with you you want to put all that if it's the rainy season you also want to make sure that you're planning towards an indoor wedding or if you're having an outdoor wedding make sure that your tents and your canopies are very secure and they're not leaking and all of that you want to have those kind of cross checks to make sure that your event goes smoothly and your guests are not inconvenienced the second thing most people forget is transportation for their bridal party I want you to understand that these people are part of your big day. They made sacrifices, cancelled events from their calendars just to be part of your big day. Don't just treat them like trash and maybe tell them, oh, find your way by yourself or do that. The same way you're making plans to get to the event with your spouse, you want to make sure that you're also making plans, sufficient plans for your bridal party. If there are so much and you have only one vehicle to transport them, you know they're going to be going in batches, so you want to make sure they go ahead of you so that you guys can arrive at the same time and walk in to church at the same time not very fair to them if some of them are stranded outside or stranded in the hotel or they have to walk on hills and every other thing make sure that as you're making plans for yourself you're also making plans for them my number three point would be to assign someone as your point of contact person i'm not talking about your chief bridesmaid i'm talking about someone who you can trust someone who your vendors can call that person that answers all the calls that ordinarily you would have answered or all the things that you would have attended to guests are calling your vendors are calling these people are calling you your attention is needed everywhere and on your big day you want to be calm and doing the things and enjoying every single moment have someone you trust who you know is going to be handling all of that my fourth tip is to have a miscellaneous budget this budget goes to things that might just come out might just spring up last minute i mentioned that in my last video where i listed out all the things that you need to plan your wedding if you haven't seen that checklist i'm going to link it up above i encourage you to also watch it and you might gain some useful information from it this budget is actually attributed to last minute surprises make sure you have extra fun for all of that the fifth tip is having extra seats at your occasion a lot of us forget that a typical setting is that if you invite one person they might most likely come with two people or three people or four people and one thing about people if you've noticed in any occasion humans <laughs> let me just use the word humans hate to sit beside each other especially when there's a lot of space so you hardly see people sitting in rows like sitting exactly filling up every single gap most women will probably sit down and drop their purse for the imaginary person <laughs> 
What? So make extra seats so that towards your occasion you don't find people standing up or coming in and immediately leaving out of inconvenience because there's no seat for them to enjoy your wedding. Now the sixth tip is to assign someone close to you for the order of photograph. Many times we just push that part to the photographer but bear in mind that most times you're probably meeting the photographer for the first or second time that day. The photographer probably doesn't even know your family member so you find out that that time takes too long but when you call someone that's close to your family at least the person is able to recognize 80% of whoever you know needs to be in the picture thereby saving time. Number seven is transportation for the couple after the reception. I know a lot of people don't usually have this issue but I believe some have. Just make sure that you're making plans especially if you're hiring your vehicle. Make sure that you're making plans of which vehicle is going to convey you and your gifts after your reception. Sometimes you find out that a lot of people are stranded after your occasion. You're like, ah, uh -uh, who's going to carry us back to the hotel? Who's going to pack all these gifts back to the hotel or back to your house? Another bonus tip I'm going to add under this is to make sure that if you're also hiring, make sure you're also making plans of a vehicle to convey you to church the next day. The last thing you want to do is to be stressed about the little things after such an exciting day of your life. Number eight on our list is talk to vendors about over time. If you're like the party kind of person and you know that your reception is going to go way over time, please don't feel like you're entitled or don't feel like Simply because you paid someone for their services, they are slaves to you for the entire day. I'm going to use that word slaves because a lot of people, once you pay a vendor, it's like, ah, that vendor has to stay all through the entire occasion. Let them know. Let them know. They might not add any extra costs, but just the convenience of letting them know, oh, my occasion is going to end very late especially since they, are, they might not, you don't know their movements and their plan and their schedule so that they would know if they're making extra accommodation plans and you know, make little adjustments to their own personal schedule. If you're going to be having a reception that's going to be lasting you know, too late in the night or you're going to be having an after party or a party before, stuff like that, always make sure your vendors understand your schedule and agree to your terms and conditions. For me personally, I use this next tip for all my occasions, and that is factoring yourself into your guest count when placing your order with your caterer. So when you're ordering your food for your caterer, I want you to know, <laughs> for me personally, I don't like stress especially after I've planned an event or had a big occasion. There's no need stressing myself. I'm paying a caterer to cook for how many people? Let's say 500 people or 300 people. Why wouldn't you just tell the person to cook for 10 extra people? That way you have enough food to last you two, three days if you have a refrigerator. You know, so just factor yourself in so that the next morning you don't have to start cooking or buying food or looking for where to get food. Factor yourself into that guest list. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Number 10 on our list will help you be a very good host. And that is to put aside your vendor meals. It's sort of safe to say unfair for you to leave your vendors totally hungry throughout the day. Now, when I mean hungry, especially for people who are going to be working like everywhere beside you, like your photographer, you want to make sure that you're putting aside their meals, your band guys, all those people that are working close to you and you know that they might probably not have time for any break. Just more convenient for you to put aside their meals so that they know that whenever they have a little time on their hands, they can just take a break, eat and continue working. Now, number 11 on our list is to assign someone to return your rental items you would notice that all throughout this list i'm just trying to get rid of any extra stress anything that's going to make you stressed up after your big day it's a no for me and that's what i'm here for that's why i'm here giving you all this info to make sure that you're enjoying your honeymoon you're rested you're coming back with that after marital glow that comes from rest get someone to return your rental item so that you don't have to start running here running there you know just get somebody or you can make a negotiation with the vendor to pick it up on that day this is very optional if you want but i feel like it's also going to be convenient but in many cases it might not work out and that is to book a hotel block now what i mean is that let's say book rooms that are close to each other for all your guests if you're having a lot of out of town guests it might just be convenient to make sure that everybody is in close proximity in case one person needs to talk to the other but i understand that most 
most hotels, the way they are built, so the rooms might not be the same price and maybe you guys are working on a budget. But if it works out for you, it would just be nice to know that maybe your guests are from 301 to 310. You know, all of you are together on the same floor. Everybody is together so that if things need to go across, or information needs to be passed across, it's much easier. Number 13 on our list, to write a do not playlist and a must playlist for your DJ. Many times when you go for occasions, you see, let's say they announce, oh, let's invite the bride and groom to come and dance in. The DJ starts feeling like, oh, this song must be good for them. And they're like, what kind of rubbish is that? What song is that? Please, 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 please tell him to change the song and all of that. Make sure that all these key moments in your occasion, you're telling your DJ, especially if you're a picky person when it comes to your music, make sure you tell your DJ what songs you don't absolutely want to hear your wedding and what songs you would love to hear. This will help give them a guidance to the kind of songs that they play. The next tip is to put someone in charge of your gift items, your personal items and the money that's going to be given to you on your big day. I mean a typical Nigerian wedding you know we spray the money like a eh, eh. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're putting someone that you actually trust in charge of that. And also for your gift items you want to put someone specifically in charge to also take the gifts and also hand over souvenirs to the people that give you gifts. Well, number 15 on our list is to give enough time for your dress adjustment. Especially when it comes to your bridesmaid dresses. I know that some of your friends might be coming from out of town. So what you want to do is to see if they can come maybe a day earlier or so, or if you guys can even sew the dresses individually. Because the last thing you want is to find out that the particular bridesmaid's dress doesn't fit or to find out that your wedding gown doesn't fit properly. So make sure you're making all these adjustments ahead of time so that your tailor or your designer can adjust to avoid last minute traumatic events. <laughs> Next on our list, plan out your accessories and personal care items. So what I recommend is that probably even if you're not wearing your wedding gown, you want to test your accessories and make sure that they match with whatever fabric you're buying or the gown or your reception dress. Don't just assume that simply because you're buying an earring, it's, also, it's going to work for both your wedding gown, like the style of your wedding gown and the style of your reception dress. And you want to make sure that you're packing your personal care items for your big day. You make sure you're packing your deodorant, you're packing your spray. You want to smell absolutely beautiful. I encourage you to invest in that because a lot of people are going to be hugging you. A lot of people are going to be coming close to you, going to be dancing. So you want to make sure that you're always, always smelling nice. Now the next tip is to make sure you eat your breakfast, have a good breakfast. It mustn't be a heavy breakfast, but make sure you're just taking in something. A lot of people, I know because of nervousness, might not want to. If you already are not a breakfast person, then fine, that's good. You can eat after your church service and reception. For me personally, I'm not a breakfast person, so that's what I did. I ate before entering my reception venue. So you can also do that, but make sure you're having a good breakfast and you're drinking a lot of water so that you don't get dehydrated during your day or get you know so exhausted after your big day and realize that you've hurt yourself or you don't feel very well number 18 on our list don't forget to give proper directions and signage don't just assume that simply because you know the route to your venue everybody is going to know i've had so many brides tell me okay my house is just when you come straight you turn left you see my house and i'm driving for one hour i still haven't seen their house and then you know i'm asking i'm getting frustrated on the road because she's not even sure so you might just do well to to go go again through that exact route that leads to your venue and put just small banners to make sure that people coming don't get stranded or lost on the way and they know that they're on the right track you know you can just put a sign keep going down turn left turn right it would make it so much easier for everyone number 19 this is something I'm going to tell you because I believe that one of the key things to having a wonderful wedding is to have good memories and I will recommend that you make sure that at least 
no matter how tight on a budget you are you have good lighting on your stage this is because this is where most of your pictures are going to be taken you can decide to take all your pictures on stage literally without even taking any picture it doesn't even matter if your guests are literally in the dark but you want to make sure you have perfect lighting so that all the things that you guys are going to be doing on stage will look absolutely beautiful when photographed. So number 20, yay! This list is so long. I'm now wondering how I chose 25. I should have done like 10 or 15, but there were just some things I was like, this has to be in this list. So number 20 is don't forget the cake table. Now I see this a lot, especially during traditional weddings. I don't know why, but just put that on your list don't forget the cake table most times when they're hiring tables you just hire the conventional big white table you know also make sure that you're getting a cute table for your wedding cake so it's not like you know boring and big with lack of decorations just get something nice so that your cake stand also looks absolutely gorgeous number 21 keep vendor contact information at hand you want to have this very very close to you and probably give some to your give the same contact information to the point of contact person we mentioned earlier and also maybe to your spouse and any other person your event planner or whoever is standing in as the event planner of the day you want to make sure everybody knows who to call when something goes wrong to avoid having the sole pressure to make sure everything is perfect this next tip is so important make sure you put together an emergency kit for your wedding day now this emergency kit is not like the conventional emergency kit now this includes needles tread nail polish super glue you know those little things that you know can fix things that will go wrong you want to make sure that you're putting them in baby wipes you know a little tiny spray that you can just use to touch yourself up a little powder puff hankies you know, every single thing just sit down and think what do i usually use on a regular day what do i need what are the things that i usually need or that comes in handy put those into your kids you will thank yourself later and hopefully thank me too number 22 is to make sure you have a nice hanger for your wedding gown this will make your wedding gown short absolutely beautiful so that you don't have to use this iron hangers that look very ugly make sure that you get a cute maybe wooden hanger that you can use to hang your wedding gown so that your photographer can get the full details and your videographer too can film it anywhere they want to number 24 bring some comfortable shoes for the reception and after the reception now even if you don't want to wear them for your reception after the reception you don't want to be going back to the hotels with those painful heels make sure that you get comfortable shoes that you can wear at any time once your feet start getting distressed number 25 i left this tip because i feel like it's one of the most forgotten tips and you need to remember this make sure you also prep for the honeymoon now what I mean by this I probably need to go into details for what it's like to prep for your honeymoon and by honeymoon I don't even mean that maybe you're going to a luxurious island I'm just talking about that first few weeks with your new spouse yes make sure you have some suitcases packed and also make sure you take care especially to the brides out there make sure that in the midst of all the stress of planning you've also done your personal care what i mean by personal care is to make sure that you've done your personal care <laughs> so if you like a personal care video let me know but there are lots of personal care videos out there i want to make sure that underneath all the gorgeousness that you've paid for your makeup your gown everything by the time you wipe them off at night you still look beautiful on the inside and i'm going to leave it at that because i know you understand what i'm saying make sure 
make sure you do that i hope you found this video helpful don't forget to smash that like button subscribe and let me know in the comments if there are more videos like this you'd like to see. share this video to all the brides out there share it on your whatsapp status your facebook status if you did enjoy this video and found it helpful i spent so much time doing this don't let it flop <laughs> so don't forget to smash that subscribe button let's grow come on guys let's grow and thank you so much for watching if you're still watching up to now and i'll see you in my my next video. Bye! <laughs>